apply to a wet plaster surface, as the plaster dries, the pigments uh, and the plaster form a chemical bond, which makes it a very durable finish, uh, very fade resistant depending on the, the dyes they, they, they would use. And it, when you think about it, look at ancient buildings that were made of stone, um, that the a masonry or uh, and masonry that a plaster finish is a nice finishing method, and applying pigments to that plaster gives a decoration. We find evidence of that all the way back into Pompeii. Frescoes and errors, after they've dusted off all the volcanic ash, are in very good shape. The problem is, frescoes are subject to the same damage that buildings are, especially if you have um, buildings in Mexico City which are very earthquake prone because it's on a dry lake bed. So Diego Rivera, seeing the damage of some buildings, began practicing by applying the plaster to metal frames that he would have contracted onto which he would then do his art, which makes a lot of sense. The problem is it's really much like a unreinforced stucco wall with finish on only one side. Anyway, in 1940, oh, and by the way, for those of you who know, Diego was also married to, twice, to Frida Kahlo, the famous painter. And uh, you'll see Frida featured in the center, the center lower panel. Diego himself is featured twice uh, on the mural as well. In 1940, he came up to San Francisco and he was practicing here, um, working for a number of wealthy benefactors. And one of the benefactors he was working for was an architect by the name of Timothy Fluger. Fluger is best known for the Casper Theater, 450 Sutter Street, and the ATT building, which is that huge building through the windows there. So he was, a, he was a big architect in San Francisco. Uh, Fluger was also working on the Golden Gate Exposition at Treasure Island and convinced Diego to participate. They had a pavilion there set up called Art in Action, where local artists, famous artists from this area, all the way up to Canada, were invited to do their work in the full view of the people visiting the fair. So they had sculptors, ceramicists, painters, all working and people could, could walk around and watch them. Diego was contracted to do, this, this is a 10 panel mural. Diego was actually contracted to do six panels, three, three top and three bottom. But when he got there, he said, oh, no, I want to do 10. So they had four more panels made, which is this 10 panel uh, mural that we see here. The problem was, it was a lot more work, and the fair actually ended before he was done. And so he and his assistants, his assistants came back after the fair was over and worked in, in this empty building for several more months, finishing the mural. Finally, it was done, they had a, a brief opening, probably only about a weekend. People got to see it, and then that was it. The mural was taken, taken apart. It was supposed to go to a new library that Timothy Fluger was designing on the grounds of City College of San Francisco. And you can actually see the plans for it in Timothy's hand. Timothy is wearing a brown tweedy jacket, and he's got a set of plans on it. It actually shows where the mirror was going to go on a wall. Unfortunately, World War II broke out, and the steel was needed for the war effort, and they never built a library. So for the next 20 something odd years, it sat in crates on the grounds of City College behind the football field. Finally, and they never built that the library. So in 1960, Timothy's brother, Milton, who now took over the, the, the practice after uh, Timothy died, was designing a small theater on the grounds of City College. It was actually part of a fine arts complex. And they suggested, well, oh, can we put it in the lobby? So they agreed to put it in the lobby. The problem was the lobby really wasn't very big. It was actually a, uh, uh, there's some pictures I'm circling around. It's actually a round, it's a semi-round or curved wall. And so they wedged it into this lobby and that's where it, 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 it stayed. Now the other problem was that when they built the library, uh, built the theater, they basically welded rods at the back of the mural and they, stuck it onto the wall through the holes in the concrete wall and then they poured concrete around it. So basically it was part of the building, it encased the building.
by the early 2000s, what the theater had kind of run out of its useful life. It was ready to be torn down. City College had been trying to rebuild a new one for, for quite some time. But, the pro but they've had this challenge of how to get the Bureau out of there. Uh, and in fact, it was proposed in the 1970s, and the structural engineer said, no, we can't figure out how to do this. Momo is working on a, uh, working with a, uh, on an exhibit that will open next year called Diego Rivera's America, and it's going to be a traveling show. There's pieces coming from all over the world, and it'll, it'll arrive here in San Francisco, then move to the museums. But the museum thought it would be nice to borrow the mural from City College. And in 2018, they said, well, let's, let's, let's make a deal. We'll, we'll move the mural to MoMA, and we'll give it back to City College, and they can put it up in their new building that they're planning. So it sounds like a good idea. The problem is, they, they, once they, they, they inked the contract, they began looking at actually how the mural was installed, and they couldn't figure out actually how to get it out. And so what MoMA did was they convened the convention of all the, the more uh, the experts in Mexico City, and they put together a team which included uh, people from the university down in Mexico, the, the UNAM, the Autonomous University of Mexico, their, their expert fine art movers, engineers and architects, and figure out how to move this thing. But the first thing they did was two years ago, they started the conservation process, even in place at City College. They began cleaning the mural, they x-rayed it to look for all the fractures, and then they poured holes in the concrete wall to see what it actually looked like. And when they, when they opened it up back, they realized, oh, this thing is actually not that stable. The steel they use is relatively thin. It's kind of, kind of pot metal uh, studs. And they, they recommended that in order to preserve this thing, they needed a new frame to keep it rigid. So if you look on the side of the mural, you'll actually see the plaster. The orange steel is the original frame that was made in 1940. And then the gray steel is the new frame to keep it rigid for the rest of its life. Now, the other problem was that they, they couldn't figure out if, when they're moving it, and they're pouring holes in concrete walls, whether the vibration would damage the mural, because it's plastic. And so the Mexican uh, scientists and engineers proposed to MoMA, we need to build two replica panels, one top one, one bottom one, and then put it in a lab down in the university, put it on the wall, attach sensors to it, and then remove it so they can determine how much vibration it can take to actually they can move to move it with. So when they actually came up with a sensing system that actually had status on top. So if the amplitude of the vibration was too great, they would actually tell everybody to stop and let it settle down before they could work on it again. And that's what they did. That basically during, unfortunately, uh, that was being done in the beginning of COVID uh, lockdown. So the U.S. team actually couldn't go down to Mexico to watch it. They had, we had a lot to watch it on, on Zoom. Uh, but eventually they got the data and they, they bought the sensing system. Meanwhile, up in the United States, we had a different problem. When they investigated how many holes they needed to pour in the concrete wall to remove the anchors, it actually exceeded the safety tolerance of the building. They were afraid of the building collapse. So they finally uh, resolved it by having the structural engineer recommended they could only move one set of panels at a time. So after they would pour all the holes and move the panel, they have to refill the holes and restore the wall before they could move to the next panel. The other problem was just getting from City College here to the museum. The, the whole panel exceeds the heights of things like beauty wires, uh, the power cables, and you couldn't go over big potholes, and so they, they basically have to be a five mile hour overnight journey, one at a time. What's the journey time? Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They had to, they, they couldn't even drive over first. And then they finally get out to Howard Street. The city, MTA, had just put up all those new uh, flower pots and the beautification things. They had to lift the panels over the last set of wires and over the planters 
to land on the ground right there and then, then roll in through the they had uh, on the, on the windows there. If you, if you recall, the windows had been removed for quite some time when the JR exhibit left and, uh, and the Richard Serra left. So they had to kind of roll it into the floor. Hey. So essentially, that is the story of how uh, the mural got here. So the question, repeat the question. Um, the, the new frame is actually attached to the old frame, and it's, they could be removed. The, the engineer calculated exactly where were all the weak points on the old frame. So basically, they reinforced it in slightly different points. Now, if you look at the AHS, look in the back, you'll see a lot of other steel, the diagonal ones. Uh, it looks like you pulled up a bridge. That is just for the exhibit here at SF Roma. It's just for this small exhibit. You can, you can tell how, how large it is. Anyway, the, last, the end of the story on just moving is what's going to happen next. The uh, Diego, Diego Rivera's America will start next year. 2023 is scheduled to go to end as it is. The exhibition said that it's supposed to go back to City College at the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, City College is behind schedule with building their new theater. So we don't know what's going to happen in 2023, which is why I recommend everybody visit it now and look at the mural because it may disappear for some time after that point. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so that's the story of the movie. Um, just on the art itself, it is a celebration of the artistic expression of, of Mexico and the United States of North America. The left hand side is uh, Mexico, the right hand side is the United States. And, and most of it is fairly celebratory. There are some very thoughtful things in this as well. Obviously, there was a criticism of, of fascism. You can see the of the, uh, the fascist. As well as um, cinematographic depictions of them as well. So that's why you'll see the Charlie Chaplin, great dictator image. So there's a lot of mixture of elements. I always like the fun one of the diver, which is depicted twice. She was actually a terrific class athlete who was from City College. Unfortunately, because of World War II, she was unable to compete. But she did go on as a in Hollywood as Esther Williams' double, stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anything else? Any questions? Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.